According to the state of New Jersey, I'm what's considered a professional driver, and that's because I have a CDL Class A license. And basically, that authorizes me to drive tractor trailers. Part of the responsibility of driving these behemoth trucks is properly inspecting them before we take them out on the road. We need to go over all the basic um, operating functions and just make sure that the truck is safe to operate on the highway before we take it out on the road. Being a professional driver, I take safety very seriously, not just when I'm driving these big trucks, but also when I'm driving my pickup truck. So in today's video, I'm gonna talk about trailer hitches and why you may wanna upgrade your hitch. I feel like one of the most overlooked aspects of towing is ensuring that you have an adequate trailer hitch and ball that is designed to carry the weight of what you're towing behind you. For example, I recently bought a dump trailer. It's a 12,000 pound dump trailer, but my truck is only rated to carry 9,400 pounds. So the empty weight of the trailer is 3,400 pounds. So the max load that I could put in that trailer is 6,000 pounds or three tons bringing up the total weight of the trailer and the load in the trailer to right at my max tow capacity, 9,400 pounds. Now this is the hitch that I've been using to tow the trailer lately. Since I bought the trailer, I've been very careful not to put over a ton of weight in the trailer. Here's why. If we take the empty weight of the trailer, 3,400 pounds, and we add one ton, that would give us a weight of 5,400 pounds, which is just under the capacity of this hitch. This hitch is only rated for 6,000 pounds. So if I ever want to put more than a ton in that trailer, I need to upgrade this hitch. Being a professional driver, even though I'm driving my pickup truck, I've always paid very close attention to the weight capacity of my truck, the hitch, and the trailer. Now with that spiel out of the way, I'm going to start talking about the hitch that I've been using and what I've decided to upgrade to and why. I kind of want to divide this video into three sections from here on out. I want to talk about the hitch receivers themselves, then the balls, and then the hitch pins. So first things first, let's compare this hitch to this hitch. What are the similarities? Well, both of them are two inch receivers and both of them have a two inch drop. That is where the similarities end. Now let's talk about this hitch. Let's talk about its rating first. It's rated for 6,000 pounds. Let's take a look at the construction. Hollow square tubing. Then this is three quarter inch stock, and they probably just heated this up and bent it. I'm extremely doubtful that it's heat treated. And you have a weld right here, and looking at this weld, there's a very small amount of undercut, almost not noticeable, but I feel like the weak spot of this hitch is this weld right here. And that's why this hitch is probably only rated for 6,000 pounds. So it's cheap to manufacture, and that's probably a reason why many people would go with this hitch, you know, not looking at the rating, just looking, oh, it's a two inch drop, that's all I need, it's cheap, I'll buy it. But the quality of this hitch is significantly lower compared to this hitch, which we'll get into in a minute here. Also something important to note upon, when you're dealing with trailer hitches and trailer balls, there's two different size shanks. There's one inch shank balls and there's inch and a quarter shank balls. This hitch is a one inch shank ball, as where that other hitch over there, that's inch and a quarter. So. A cheap hitch, it'll get the job done, but if you plan to tow anything over 4,000 pounds, you, you really should have something a bit heavier duty. Now let's talk about this hitch that I recently upgraded to. Now this hitch is much more expensive than the other hitch, but for good reason. First off, let's look at the rating, the capacity of this hitch. Get this, 17,000 pounds as opposed to 6,000 pounds over here. Why is the rating so much higher? Well, this hitch is one solid forged piece of steel. There's no hollow tubing. There's no weak point welds. It's probably two or three times heavier, but again, it's just one solid forged piece of metal. And also, the shank for the trailer ball is inch and a quarter as opposed to one inch with this hitch. To me, this is the type of hitch that you throw on the back of your truck and you just feel confident that whatever you're towing, the hitch is not going to fail. Of course, making sure that you stay under the rating of your hitch and your ball, but again, you know, I'm, I'm never going to tow more than 9,400 pounds and I have a 17,000 pound rated hitch. I'm feeling very confident. All right, now 
I'm gonna talk about my balls. And I have a lot to say about my balls, so I hope you're ready to listen to a spiel about my balls. Now, first thing I wanna do, I wanna compare my balls, my righty and my lefty here. Uh, both of them are two and five sixteenths inch balls. That's where the similarities end. I also wanna note that this is one inch shank, this is inch and a quarter, this is chrome plated mild steel, and this is stainless steel. 7,500 pound rating, 15,000 pound rating, under $10, and this costs about $50. So you can understand why they don't really sell these stainless steel balls in the store, because who wants to spend $50 on a, a stainless steel trailer hitch ball? Well, I do. All right, let's talk about this cheap ball. So yes, rated for 7,500 pounds, one inch shank, chrome plated. The problem with chrome plating is the chrome plating on this ball will wear down over time, especially with heavy use. And that exposes the mild steel underneath the chrome plating. These balls are significantly cheaper to manufacture. And what happens after the chrome plating wears down and you have this exposed mild steel, this will pit and this will corrode over time. So you're going to find yourself replacing this. And not to mention, it's going to be really ugly, you know, especially if you're not using this, you're not putting any grease on this ball. It's going to be a big, rusty, ugly mess. So really, you get what you pay for here. Now, let's talk about this ball. So again, two and five sixteenths inch ball, inch and a quarter shank, rated at 15,000 pounds. $50 for this ball. It's a lot of money for this ball, but this is a ball that will last a lifetime. This is stainless steel, and there are some superior properties of stainless steel over mild steel. What makes it superior? Well, first off, stainless steel is harder. It's harder than mild steel, so this will take more of a beating and this will last much longer than a mild steel ball. Also, the big killer of mild steel is corrosion. Stainless steel is 200 times more resistant to corrosion than mild steel. What makes it corrosion resistant? Well, it has to do with what the stainless is made out of, the alloys in the stainless. Some of the main alloys in here that provide the corrosion resistant are nickel, molybdenum, and chromium. And basically what happens, these alloys, when they interact with oxygen from water or the air, they create a very thin barrier between the stainless and the outside environment, and, and that just provides corrosion resistance and protection for the ball. And I just think it's a really good investment. I, I really believe that when you invest in a stainless steel ball, it's, it's more than likely gonna last a lifetime, as where mild steel chrome plated ball, I, I don't know. What are you gonna get, eight years out of that? All right, and finally, let's talk about hitch pins. So first off, no matter what trailer hitch you have, I feel like you should have a locking hitch pin. You know, they do have hitch pins with just the hairpin cotters, but you know, if you're in a parking lot and some D-bag wants to steal your hitch, all they gotta do is pull that little clip out, pull out your trailer hitch pin, and you know, in a matter of two seconds, they walk away with your trailer hitch. You know, it's especially important to protect your trailer hitch if you're looking to invest some serious money in a trailer hitch. With that, there are two hitch pins in front of you. This was a chrome plated mild steel trailer hitch pin that I bought three years ago. And look at it, look at the corrosion. Once the chrome plating fails and the elements can just be exposed to that mild steel, look at what happens. Pitting, corrosion, rust, would you trust this pin towing any trailer? I wouldn't. This is why I hate chrome plated mild steel. Now here is a much better option. This is a 304 stainless steel hitch pin, lockable, and something like this, again, 200 times more corrosion resistant than mild steel. So I'm not 100% sure that this hitch pin will last a lifetime because, you know, these do go back and forth a little bit, so there may be some wear, but again, stainless steel is harder than mild steel. If it doesn't last a lifetime, it's gonna last a very long time. So let's just sum up a little bit here. I think the old saying rings true that you really get what you pay for. Single piece forged hitch, there's no weak points. I mean, look at this cheap thing. Weak point, that weld, that could fail. Look at your ball, chrome plated ball. A lot cheaper to buy, but once that chrome plating fails, mild steel gets exposed, it's gonna rust, it's gonna corrode, it's gonna pit. Keep an eye on it, especially if you plan to keep that hitch. Just keep a very close eye on that. Stainless steel, harder, 200 times more corrosion resistant. A better 
option when it comes to towing and a lot of things. Mild steel does have its place, but when it comes to towing, I think stainless steel is the way to go. So that's it for today's video. Watch your weights, be careful out there, and I'll catch you on the next one.